Good morning, and welcome to worship with First Baptist Church of Ann Arbor. I'm Stacy. I'm Paul. And we are the pastors of this congregation here, and we're so glad that you are joining us for worship today. We invite all of you to take a moment to read the announcements related to our congregational life and ministry. You'll find those in the description of this video. While you're there, you'll see a number of items of information and interest, including a link to our worship sign-in, which we invite you to uh, do to let us know who's out there and anything else you would like to communicate to us. You will also see a link to sign up for our weekly news if you're not already receiving it. You'll also find some information about the uh, um, offerings for spiritual formation for adults, for youth, and for children, all of which is kicking off today and in the week to come. This morning, following worship, instead of Zoom fellowship time, which we've been having for the last several months, we will have our children's church school via Zoom, our youth group high schoolers will meet up via Zoom, and we have a new adult spiritual formation offering on poetry and faith. Paul, you wanna tell us about that class? I do. We will be working for, uh, from this Sunday all the way up until the beginning of Advent in an exploration of poetry as it affects our spirituality, our living, our believing, this is being led by Heather Entrican, who will do it beautifully, and I get to help her lead it. We'll be talking about what poetry means to various ones of us in uh, the group and how it is connected with life issues and faith for us. We'll be presenting each week specific poems, particular poems for us to read and contemplate and discuss together. Some of them brought by the leaders, others of them brought by you who participate with us. This should be an exciting and enriching time. We hope many of you can join us starting at 11.15 today on Zoom. We also have offerings during the week on Tuesday and Thursday, as always, at 8.30 on our Facebook page. We have night prayer. That's for everyone, all ages. It's a brief time to pause together and reflect and pray. But this week, also on Wednesday at 8.30 on our Facebook page, we'll be launching another adult formation opportunity called Reflecting on the Psalms. And Paul will tell us about that one too. I won't tell you much. I get to lead it and I hope that you will join uh, each Wednesday that you're able at 8.30 if you're interested. Each week we'll look at an individual psalm. Uh, I will take us through uh, its meanings and applications as I can. And because it will be a live Facebook uh, offering, then we can actually interact with each other in real time uh, and talk about our own understandings and questions concerning the psalm. Hope many of you will join us. Please do take the time to read announcements in the video description because this isn't even everything that's going on this week, let alone beyond. So uh, we do invite you to check those out. This morning is World Communion Sunday. We will be celebrating communion later in this worship service. So we invite you to go ahead and have your bread and cup ready for that so we can celebrate together in just a little bit. And now, Let's worship.
A Psalm of David. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. It is rising from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees are of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter than honey, even drippings from the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The word of the Lord. Good morning. I wonder if when you started school, if you started with some rules, maybe some rules the teacher offered, or maybe the teacher asked the class what rules they would like. Maybe things like make sure you take turns, make sure you mute your mic when you're listening to others. Maybe if you feel comfortable and when it's possible, have your video on so we can see you. Often we start gatherings when we're doing important things like learning with rules. I wonder why we do that. Do you think we do that because we all love rules so much? I don't think so. I think we do it because it helps us respect one another. Today we hear a story from the Bible when God gave the Ten Commandments, the Ten Rules, the Ten Best Ways to Live. And I don't think God gave us those because God likes rules so much, but because God loves us so much. God wants to help us love God and love others well. One of the rules God gives us is do not steal. Stealing is taking something that isn't yours. Desmond Tutu, a pastor, he says it like this, do not take without asking. I would like to share a new word with you. The word is consent. Consent is when people make a plan together and everyone agrees to the plan. Maybe like if you and a sibling are fighting over playing with the trains and you decide one sibling will play first for 10 minutes with the train track and then you get a turn after that for 10 minutes. Maybe it's like when you're jumping on the trampoline and your friends are all together and you decide you're gonna play a game and you start jumping and the jumping gets higher and higher. And then one of the friends says, stop. 
Consent is when you stop your body from jumping and listen to what your friend needs. It's important to listen to one another. It's important to say what you need too. Maybe you are wanting to give a hug to a friend. It's good to check in with your friends first and ask, would you like a hug? Our friends may say yes. They may say no using their words. They may also say yes with their bodies and put out their arms like this to give you a hug. They may also look down and back away. That's somebody saying no using their body. It's important to listen and to notice and to hear what people want or don't want. During the pandemic, we have to make plans too when we agree about what we feel comfortable with. You might need to say to somebody, I feel comfortable when everybody has a mask on. Would you please put your mask up over your nose? Or if you're outside at a playground, you might have someone say to you, do you feel comfortable if I sit on this swing and you're over there a couple swings away? Does that feel comfortable to you? God gave us the Ten Commandments to help us love God and love others well. To love others well, it's important. It's an important way to show respect and you can do that through consent. Consent is a way of not stealing. It helps us acknowledge that we get to make decisions for ourselves, what is good for us. And it helps us remember that we are responsible to listen to others too, what's good for them. And then we make a plan. And if the plan needs to change, we change it. Will you pray with me together? God, thank you for giving us the 10 best ways to live. With your help, we will not take from others without asking. We will listen to others and we will do our best to understand their wants and needs. We will share what we want and need too. Be with us as we work together to make plans that are good for everyone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The people of Israel, having been brought out of slavery, are now in the wilderness and have been gathered to Mount Sinai. Moses is on the mountain to hear the law of God given. Here is the story. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, you shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of my name, the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And shall not you shall not do any work, you, your sons or your daughters, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns, 
For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that's in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. Your na- you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Will you pray with me? Holy One of lament and liberation, of harvest moon and hidden hope, of October sky and Michigan mornings, we worship you, we thank you, we adore you, and we come before you now with our longings and our love. We come with our small faith, our little hope, and our meager prayers, asking that you, in your infinite wisdom, will hear the true need, and that you, in your infinite love, will respond. We pray for our world. We pray for our nation. We pray for Donald and Melania Trump and their family, and for all in the halls of power who are infected and affected by this virus. We pray for the White House reporters and aides who are ill. We pray for the millions around the world who have been infected and affected. We pray for the families of the millions around the world who have died. We pray for all who have been misled, for all who have been harmed by the politicization of our public health. We pray for healthcare systems, for healthcare workers, for teachers and students and their families, for essential workers, for people who live alone, for people who struggle with anxiety or depression or addiction for people who live in abusive situations. We pray for our nation. We pray that you would find a way to work your justice and mercy and the healing power of your love in our country. Find a way that doesn't depend on our goodwill towards each other because we appear to be out of that. Find a way that doesn't depend on our ability to unite around a vision for the common good because we are clearly beyond any sense of unity or vision or collective concern for the common good. So we turn to you, the one who has always made a way where there is no way. Make a way, dear God, make a way and show us how to walk in it. We pray special prayers for those in our congregation and in our hearts who need your special care right now. We pray for David Hurst, Bruce Williams, Lynn Davidge, Nancy Rushton, Betty Gersler, Deb Snyder, Marilyn Marsh, Iris Martin, Danny Jones, John Rowe, Nick Dodson, John Rapson. We also offer to you the private prayers each of us carries in our hearts. Loving God, give us hope, make us brave, Transform us more fully into the beautiful body of Christ, broken and blessed for the sake of the world. And give us the eyes to see that every one of us, including our very own selves, 
belong at your table of goodness and grace and life. We pray all these things in the blessed name of Jesus Christ, our brother, our friend, our Lord, our Savior, our hope. Amen. In the wearing of masks these days, I have found an unexpected pleasure. It's a new interest in people's eyes. Above their masks, without the distraction of noses, mouths, chins, etc., just the brow and the eyes remain. And over and over, I've been struck by how beautifully, how beautiful they are, and by how powerfully expressive they can be. Essential workers in grocery stores and pharmacies, the nurses who came to visit my mother, the friends who stand outside my door, and strangers and others. So many pairs of eyes, and some, of course, showed fatigue and distraction, but so many were so eloquent in expressing kindness, intelligence, sense of humor, concern, sadness, empathy, delight. The eyes are an organ of speech, and I've been moved by the power of their eloquent expression. And so a funny thing happened to me as I began reflecting on the Ten Commandments for today's sermon. Weirdly, I began to imagine the eyes of God as the Ten Commandments were being given to Moses and to us. Have no other gods before me. Make no idols for yourselves. Don't abuse my name. Keep Sabbath. Honor your mother and father. Don't kill. Don't commit adultery. Don't bear false witness. Don't steal. Don't covet. Those are the words. But what's the look in the eyes of the one who's giving them? I must tell you that my own vision shifted back and forth. Once or twice, I saw that when giving the commandments, the eyes of God were sad, filled with tears over all our killing and stealing, desecrating, spewing falsehoods, the eyes a kind of pleading, my children, please stop destroying each other, destroying my creation, destroying yourselves. And then maybe something sharper, more like fury in the eyes of God, like God has had it with our deathly ways, cursed be your savaging of each other and your lying to each other and your desecrating of my world. Cursed be your robbing of the poor. No more. You already knew what is right. Now I set it in stone. Live by it or be crushed by it. or something more hopeful. The eyes of the law-giving God filled with compassion, like a great physician come to heal our wounds and the wounds of the world. The commandments a prescription for the healing of us all for the putting and keeping of you and me on the path to wellness of body and mind and relationship. 
or try one more. Giving the commands to Moses and to us, the eyes of God hold a gleam of joy, a kind of fierce gladness, a sovereign delight to be given to us mortals, this spectacular gift for our freedom. Because that's what God's commandments finally are. They are liberation. You remember, don't you, that the people gathered round that mountains to receive the commandments had been all their lives held slaves. And that for centuries before them, their forebears were held in slavery. And now in recent weeks, God had rained down justice and set them free and has led them to this place and toward a new home and new life. But the breaking of their chains was only part one of their emancipation. It is now in bestowing on them their new stature their new purpose, their new relationship, that God completes their emancipation. God gives to them a mandate for living as free people do, to live alternatively to how their oppressors lived, to live alternatively to how their oppressors wanted them to live, but to live instead like people who are truly set free. So it begins, have no other gods before me, make no idols for yourselves. Can you see what freeing possibilities lie in such command? David Foster Wallace, in a now famous commencement address, told the graduates, there is actually no such thing as atheism. No such thing as not worshiping. Everybody worships. The only choice we get is what to worship. He went on to say the reason, if for nothing else, to worship only what he called a spiritual thing is that anything else you worship will eat you alive. If you worship, Money and things. You'll never have enough. Worship your body and beauty and your sexual allure. You'll always feel ugly. Worship power and you'll always want more and end up feeling weak and afraid. Worship your intellect being seen as smart. You will end up feeling stupid, a fraud, always on the verge of being found out. Seriously, does the worship of possessions or bodies or power or intellect sound like freedom to you? Or add to the list the worship of productivity, pleasure, other people's opinion of us, or all our other little ego needs? No. No freedom there. And the adoration of these things isn't just a sign of being unfree. It is a sign of not being sane. Bowing to illusions, making big sacrifices to things that cannot satisfy or even last but instead to seek the source of all that is, to 
Seek and serve the one in whose hand your little life is held. To live in reverence. To bow to nothing but eternal love. That is the foundation of a liberated life. And so with the other commandments, remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. Work your heart out for six days running, but one day each week, stop your work and rest and be reminded that you matter more than anything you achieve that the people around you matter more and your relationship to them and with your own body and mind and soul and your relationship with God, these are the center of an emancipated life. And so the happy commandment, rest. It goes on. Honor your mother and your father. Life is pure gift, and these are the people who gave it to you. It is an unspeakable privilege to express your thankfulness by honoring them and caring for them as you have been cared for. No matter their imperfections, this is not just for their wholeness, it is for your own and you shall not kill. Every person on this earth is made in the sacred image of God to be equally valued, honored, and protected, never cheapened, never, ever disposable. When all life is held sacred at last, the world grows Beautiful. Stop the killing. Stop the conditions that lead to killing. And you shall not commit adultery. In the words of Barbara Brown Taylor on this commandment, don't mess around with marriage vows, yours or anybody else's. Show some respect for other people's commitments and for your own. And besides, to stick with one person is your best chance of growing up. And you shall not steal. If it belongs to somebody else, don't take it. And if you took it, give it back. As long as some of us claim for ourselves what rightly belongs to others, there is no hope for peace among us. And you shall not bear false witness. Lying is the rot that destroys community and relationships and nations. And a lying society invariably includes telling untruth about other groups, races, tribes, religions, and so dishonesty becomes violence. The command to tell the truth opens a door to the possibility of the healing of communities and of the soul. And you shall not covet. Or again, in Barbara Brown Taylor's words, don't, fa don't fondle other people's belongings in your mind as if they should be yours. What you have is enough, especially if what you have includes a community of the sharing and the caring that we are all invited to have and which we can become for each other. I hope by now the point is clear. Every commandment of God is given for the world's joy. They're all to get us free 
from the tyrannies that are external and internal. The tyrannies of idolatry, violence, infidelity, dishonesty, inequity, the tyrannies even of desire. And more commands came after. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And you shall love kindness and do justice and walk humbly with your God. And on the last night of his life, Jesus saying to his friends, now I give you a new commandment as I have loved you, so you love each other. And all of these given by the one with shining eyes who says, most truly and most deeply, I command you to be free, to live in the exquisite freedom of my love for all the world. And we break the commandments. The landscape is strewn with pieces of commandments broken, and we have done our share of the breaking. But the word comes new to us every day with new invitation to get up and embrace the gift of this freedom. Let us reclaim it. Let us get up and live like people who, are no, who know they are under sovereign mandate. Let's reclaim it. We, you and I, are honored, challenged, and empowered to obey. And with our own shining eyes, to call upon our people to obey love's commands. Friends, we are commanded. Thank God. And in our obedience will be our liberation. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear, not a sorrow we share, but our toil he doth richly repay. Not a grief or a loss, not a frown or a cross, but is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Then fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, and we'll walk by his side in the way what he says we will do where he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and obey for there's no other way 
still be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Through all times, in all places, in every language, across all theologies, churches have understood that this is one of the holiest things we do. We eat together. But now, physically separated as we are, sharing a meal around a table is one of the things we haven't been able to do. It's one of our deeply felt losses. Even so, when we receive the bread and the cup of the Lord's table, we are eating with each other. In this physical and spiritual act, we are connected with each other beyond time and space, beyond language and theology. We are eating with each other and with God's people in every corner of the earth, in hundreds of thousands of homes around the world. This is the table of grace, a sign of God's reign of justice and love. This is the feast of Jesus Christ who crosses every border who breaks down every wall, who destroys all that would separate and divide us, who joins us in the oneness of his globe-spanning body. Everyone is invited to this table and welcome because this feast is for all. We make ourselves ready now to receive by offering our prayers. Let us pray. Creator, we disfigure your world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Redeemer, we reject your redemption and crucify you daily. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Giver of life, we too often choose death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the good news. God, the creator, brings us new life, forgives us, and redeems us. Take hold of this forgiveness and live your life in the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together in the words Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God be upon us. Lift your hearts to heaven where Christ in glory reigns. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to offer thanks and praise. It is right indeed to give you thanks, most loving God, through Jesus Christ our Redeemer, the firstborn from the dead, the pioneer of our salvation, who is with us always, one of us, yet from the heart of God. For with your whole created universe, we praise you for your unfailing gift of life. We thank you that you make us human and stay with us, even when we turn from you to sin. God's love is shown to us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In that love, dear God, righteous and strong to save, you came among us in Jesus Christ, our crucified and living Lord. 
you make all things new. In Christ's suffering and cross, you reveal your glory and reconcile all peoples to yourself, their true and living God. In your mercy, you are now our God. Through Christ, you gather us, newborn in your spirit, a people after your own heart. We entrust ourselves to you, for you alone do justice to all people, living and departed. Now, now is the acceptable time. Now, now is, is the, the day, day of salvation. salvation. Therefore, with saints and martyrs, apostles and prophets, with all the redeemed, joyfully we praise you and say, Holy, 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 holy God of mercy, giver of life, earth and sea and sky and all that lives, declare your presence and your glory. All glory to you, giver of life, sufficient and full for all creation. Accept our praises, living God, for Jesus Christ, the one perfect offering for the world. <coughs> On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. In the same way, after the meal, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you. This is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. Let us pray. God of all creation in the suffering and death of Jesus, our Redeemer, we meet you in your glory. We lift up the cup of salvation and call upon your name. Here and now with bread and cup, we have celebrated your great acts of liberation, ever present and living in Jesus Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. May Christ ascended in majesty be our new and living way, our access to you and source of all new life. In Christ we offer ourselves to do your will. Empower our celebration with your Holy Spirit. Feed us with your life. Fire us with your love. Confront us with your justice and make us one in the body of Christ with all who share your gifts of love. Through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Creator God. Amen.
the peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you. <laughs> May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you. May God be gracious to you. May God give you grace to love with all your heart. That you may do justice. To love with all your soul. That you may show kindness. To love with all your mind. That you may walk humbly with your God. Friends, go from this hour to love the Lord your God with all your might. And love your neighbor as yourself. Go in peace to follow Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.